We'll call this meeting of the Ways and Means Committee <coughs> together today, Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2016 at 4.08. Deanne, would you please call the roll? Here. Tilly. Here. 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 Yes. Thank you, ma'am. We've all had an opportunity to review the minutes of 1516. So moved to support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. At this time, if anybody allowed it would be from the public would like to address the committee, please step to the podium. State your name and the issue that you would like to speak on behalf of, and you'll have an opportunity to uh, address ways and means. Seeing no one is coming forward under our next order of business under petitions and communications, we have a presentation by the Human Services Collaborative Council, Tricia Charbonneau Ivy. Um, if you are ready, you can uh, get going on that. <coughs> some information about the Bay Human Services Collaborative Council or your state-endorsed community collaborative for Bay County. Uh, the mission of the council is to enhance the welfare of Bay County citizens by coordinating, collaborating, and the understanding, planning, and implementation of prevention, intervention, and rehabilitation of human care services. The purpose of the group is to uh, put together executive level leadership across the health and human services spectrum. So we take uh, existing human services and try to make them more effective through interagency support and collaboration. We look to allow for the expansion of existing human services projects, which have demonstrated effectiveness, to establish additional human service programs based on needs assessments, through review and analysis of programming alternatives, pooling resources, and a community systems approach to programming. And we also review on a periodic basis human service programs to evaluate their effectiveness and efficiency and to ensure that they are research-based. And we facilitate change in contributing environmental risk factors and funding levels by engaging relevant policymakers, organizations, and community, including those who serve and support. To provide a basis for safeguarding existing programs in this economic times. Additionally, we are also the oversight body for strong family state children. Again, the group is an interconnected and collaborative network of health and human services leaders dedicated to meeting the needs of citizens in Vietnam. And this is citizens across the lifespan, everyone from young children and those before they were born to end of life care and hospice. We are your state endorsed group, and the group has been in existence for over 25 years. So you might ask how we get the work done. It is, in fact, a complex network of groups and bodies. Uh, you have in your packet a list of some of the collaborative bodies that are connected to Human Services Collaborative Council. We have both task forces and affiliated groups. And those groups inform and uh, help us to get work done in our community. Those include early childhood groups, like the Bay Garnet Great Start Collaborative, they include groups like the Self-Sufficiency Task Force that work on basic needs of human, human self-sufficiency issues. The Bay County Continuum of Care that works on housing and homelessness issues in the community. Our Senior Task Force that works on needs of older adults. As well as Suicide Prevention Coalition uh, and issues like the Bay County Prevention Network that works on mental health and wellness and substance use disorder prevention across the lifespan. So as you can see, there are a few that are affiliated, like the Domestic Violence Community Response Team and the and our Bay County Continuum of Care. And others are directly affiliated. But the intention of this is that we're all communicating with one another and working together to get the work done. So we're not duplicating each other's efforts either and making the best use of our resources. So you might say how how do we let the community know how they get access to this wonderful matrix of resources that we have? One of the things uh, that is available in our community is a service called 211, and this is a three-digit dialing system. And this is information and referral services available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this provides access to information related to all of these health and human services across the 
lost the lifespan, again, it's, and it's available with the human on the other end of the phone who will do an interview process with an individual and determine what their needs are and then connect them with those resources that are necessary. What we find is that often if an individual comes to 211 with one need, they might have more than one need. So if an individual is coming asking for food, it might be likely that their lights are shut off in their home, or maybe they're in need of assistance with a water bill, or maybe a rent payment. And these are often the top three needs in our community, food, utility assistance, and rent assistance, or housing assistance payments. Uh, the calls are confidential, uh, but they do track data. So if you visit uh, the 211 Northeast Michigan website, you can find data on the number of calls, the number of unmet needs, there wasn't a resource available, or the resources were exhausted for that particular request. Um, for various other reasons, that may not meet eligibility criteria. And we use, utilize that data to help us seek uh, grant sources and funding uh, to help meet gaps in needs. Uh, and again, it also offers us an opportunity to connect persons who are looking to volunteer or provide resources uh, with those in need. People can do a searchable web uh, connection as well if they'd like to do that, but we encourage people to use the phone uh, as they get a one-on-one -on -one and a very personal experience. There's a website for you. This is a video on the resources. Looks like this might be available to us to go. No, maybe not. It may not be available to us. services and these are things that can be posted on business websites or organizational websites if you'd like to use them or link to them. One of the things that we are linked to as I mentioned before is the continuum of care. The Michigan State Housing Development Authority uh, indicates that each county should have a, a, a continuum of care in their community and this addresses housing and human housing and rent needs in their community and homelessness issues. Each county also has a designated homeless assistance resource agency or HARP. In our community, that organization is Mid-Michigan Community Action Agency. And they provide assistance related to housing and homelessness for every organization in the community. And it's a centralized access point for this. So if you were to call 211 and ask for specific assistance around this, this is considered a specialized uh, number and they would connect you with this organization. You can also call directly for general housing and homelessness assistance to the number on the screen. You can call specifically for veterans housing and homelessness assistance. They have a specialized grant for that in our region and area. And they also are the current uh, providers for a, a service called Project Impact that provides runaway and homeless youth services uh, through a host home system. And the contact for that is Mr. Ron Till. We also have shelters in our area, such as the Bay Area Women's Center, which is a domestic violence shelter uh, to help those who are victims of domestic violence. And we have the Good Samaritan Rescue Mission in our community that provides assistance. And certainly, these can be this information can be accessed through 211, but folks can go directly to these, these organizations as well. We have a no wrong door approach in our community. <coughs> so for you to better understand what, what homelessness looks like in Bay County, uh, the continuum of care feature conducts <coughs> a point in time count, and this is where we assess homelessness in our community. We look at those who are sheltered in uh, local shelters and those who are unsheltered. So we take a day in the year and look at this. It's typically in January and that's dictated by um, housing and urban development or HUD. Uh, so when we look at this, the number of households with at least one adult and one child, there were 12 in emergency housing and 25 in transitional. So transitional housing is housing that ranges up to 24 months. It's stable housing. It's not uh, housing where you have to come and go um, overnight or short term, like 190 days. Uh, the number of persons, 40 in emergency, 88 in transitional. Number of children, five and one respectively. There are some that are missing date of birth, so you'll see that. Sometimes people don't provide that information to us. So you'll see here the number of households with only children. Um, under 18, uh, that was six.
and then those households without children. So this would be unaccompanied adult individuals, 68, and then nine were in transitional. And as you can see, there was only one um, unsheltered uh, family. So we do have lots of resources available in our community, and what the Human, Health, the Human Services Collaborative Council really works to do is to ensure that we're working together to identify any barriers to access to those resources or knowledge barriers in our community around how to get access to those resources. Or if there are uh, additional needs or gaps in our resources, we work together to try and expand those in order to best in our community. So if you have uh, any information needs, our chairperson is Lisa Cleland. She's a program officer at Barry Community Foundation. Our information is there. Or you can certainly contact me for more information if you like. Thank you. Uh, uh, Tricia, does anybody have any questions? Uh, Commissioner Begit. Commissioner Tricia, I see the DHHS sort of is with a starting point where a lot of them go to for eligibility. I just wonder how much computerization there is, how much do the agencies talk to each other to see about people going from one agency to another, because I've heard that before, where they sort of shop around and go from one to another. So I didn't know how much communication they had between agencies. There is a uh, statewide system actually that's called the Homeless Management Information System, uh, and that's where we're pulling data around housing and homelessness. And certainly there are there is a lot of activity around um, sharing information um, where individuals grant at um, and where it's possible to do so. Certainly many of our grant funders expect that. They expect us to share information around um, serving individuals. So uh, we do work together uh, to make sure that we're not duplicating as well. Commissioner Tilly. I live in the obvious in the law enforcement for um, cases. How do you find these, uh, these homeless families or homeless individuals? How do you without because they don't have technology in most cases? How do you actually locate them or get them <coughs> out there? It's typically a street outreach effort, and oftentimes individuals will come into um, places like soup kitchens or hot meal sites, and um, we're typically interacting with them at places where they might go and get. Um, maybe package of food or hygiene products, or they may come in for a hot shower. So those types of resources are often the places where we are able to interact with people and start having conversations to see if we can get them to come in for additional resources and maybe start to understand what resources they have or have not access. So if they're a veteran and maybe they have applied for benefits, that's where we begin those kinds of steps and try to connect them with veteran services here or, or with others at the VA. So much like unemployment, they don't come in or there's no outreach, we don't count them as part of the homeless statistics in our community, which we have probably more than what on your sheet here. Potentially. Potentially. And one of the, one of the um, failings of this often is that uh, it is collected in January and we recognize that in Michigan it's cold. Yeah. And so um, many people are doubled up, is what we call it. So they're often um, sleeping on family, friends, or someone else's couch. Um, but it's our goal to not allow anyone in our community to sleep in places not for human habitation or uh, we want people to be housed. So we do strive to do that. And for finding folks like that, we want to make sure that they're getting this information, that they know that there are resources out there that are available to them. And then, Mr. Commissioner, last night was talking about is, is there, I'm assuming there's a link on our, our, our website to, for individuals that may know of people who potentially are homeless that aren't seeking assistance or don't want to seek assistance, that they, they can get a hold of the organization through going to the county website. I mean, so there's a, there's a, they go to your website, I'm assuming, as well, but if there was a link on ours to your... There is a link to uh, okay. the health department website to 211, which is a preferred uh, means to, to get in touch with these services. <coughs> I make a motion to receive. Or, no other discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you, Tricia, for your presentation. Under our next order of business, we have from the Bay Community Tennis Association. This is a presentation on proposed tennis courts on the Park Avenue uh, 
uh, area and Dr. Gerald Schloff and <coughs> Joe Ricard are going to uh, give us a little bit of information. Thanks, Kim. As Kim said, this is Jerry Schloff. He's a retired dentist from Bay City. Everybody in Bay City knows him. So um, I'm, I am a phys ed teacher from Great Elementary School. I'm also the <laughs> tennis coach, boys and girls tennis coach at Central High School. Yeah. We've been working on this project for about a year. And now that our site is ready to go, we're trying to get out the public to inform people exactly what's going on. We are going to build, this is going to happen, we're building eight tennis courts on Park Avenue at the site of the former Thomas Jefferson Elementary School, which is now demolished. And so, so that's our property. We are a 501c3 organization affiliated with the United States Tennis Association. And we are doing this for the purpose of providing some recreational opportunities for all ages in Bay County. We know that, that local governments just don't have the resources anymore to provide as many recreation opportunities as they did, for example, in Jerry and I were the kids running around Bay City. So not only do we want to build tennis courts, which our tennis team can use, the bigger picture is tennis courts, which the entire community can use. They'll be physically, uh, they'll be handicap accessible. There's going to be a green space slash playground there. There's presently a playground that we are going to hopefully continue to have there. We want to run programs. We have a person able and willing to run programs, and we want to collaborate with, for example, the Dow Bay Area Family Y. We want them to offer tennis programs, the Boys and Girls Club to offer tennis programs. We'd like both the county and the city to offer tennis programs. They get the information out, we'll provide the programming. They just provide us the, the people. We'll provide the people to instruct that and to get up there. One huge question when you're building something like this is how do you sustain it? Because if you've been to Bench Park to look at those tennis courts, or the, the uh, Roosevelt Park tennis court, or the Smith Park tennis court, they're all dilapidated. They, they all need repair. And it's rather expensive to repair those. So our goal is $500,000. And 100,000 of that will be set aside with the Bay Area Community Foundation expressly for maintenance of those tennis courts. It costs about between four and eight thousand dollars per uh, every seven years per court. So you're looking at uh, roughly fifty thousand dollars every seven years to refurbish tennis courts. We will enhance that money with uh, funds from a tournament that we started last year in honor of Alex Burke. Alex Burke is a former tennis player at Central who passed away. And, our organization put together a tennis tournament as a memorial to him, and that is going to be ongoing. So we're real confident we're going to have the funds not only to build these courts, but to sustain those courts. And we'll entertain questions. Uh, Jerry, any, anything that you want to add? These drawings were actually well done over a year ago, and they we partnered with the U.S. Tennis Association. We formed our own 501 C3 to be a local affiliate. So this is, it's a strange shape property, but this is how to use it for eight courts and according to their specifications. This they had each got successful. Um, it's, uh, eight courts was a number that I think started with the USDA so that courts <coughs> can be held here. Uh, the Bay City Times used to have uh, covenant-wide, citywide tournaments. We're going to try to get Dave Rogers to get that activated again. But uh, the primary A courts allows tournaments four for the singles and four for doubles. But we foresee the majority of this time for the community, and that's why we partnered with the Y, the Boys and Girls Club, and. Uh, the amount of time that the school is going to use it is just a few hours a day, a few months of the time. Uh, this is going to, they're not going to be locked. Some of the uh, new courts in Bay County have <laughs> been locked. These will be locked. We'll have a security light there. Uh, the city's going to uh, 
work with us and put a camera, a security camera. Uh, because it's uh, fairly close to the neighborhood, I, a long time ago, asked all the neighbors what they thought about this, and, and everyone was for it. And uh, there won't be lights by design, so it, at the end of the day, when it gets dark, hopefully. But enough of us care about that. But, uh, I don't think it's, it's there'll be an issue with somebody said skateboarders. I, I don't know what they can do on a tennis court with skateboarders. We'll send them over to Infinity Park. Uh, but when we came up and we were challenged by the city to come up for some use for this property, the building could have never been used for any purpose, even though some man thought he could get Medicaid checks for Adele Foster here. The post-World War II neighborhood schools that were built like this were built with asbestos and this has been remediated there was asbestos and the glazing around the glass all that's gone this mead contracting company is doing a very good job of sorting it out and taking it away now there's a lot of poured concrete that's got rewritten it that's going to be noisy <coughs> but um it's given a whole different perspective to driving in there and going by the school and people who went to elementary school there have asked me for bricks, and teachers who taught there have asked me for bricks. So I have bricks in my back. Uh, with the brick, I'm going to give them a membership application. I thought, don't make this work in the group. But uh, it's, it's a slow process, and I'm not used to doing things this slowly, but uh, I'm, I'm excited about this happening. My kids went to Central, they played tennis. <coughs> It's a use of this that was <coughs> couldn't be used for its original intended purpose. And uh, we, we've got a lot of things happening, and, and local people that are going to be part of it. And, uh, We're a little over hundred thousand dollars towards our five hundred thousand dollar goal. Uh, we received our first grant a couple weeks ago from the Cancer Foundation, and uh, it, it's going well. It's going real well. Tennis is a very inexpensive sport. The USDA has made it very friendly to even little kids. Every elementary school in uh, basically public schools has a tennis program in the visit curriculum. The little kids use smaller rackets, bigger balls, smaller courts, and it's, uh, and it's going to happen. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, Jerry, does anybody have any questions? Uh, Tom, uh, Commissioner Harry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this, like you mentioned, a central music tennis course, is that just for Bay City Central? Or is there any other school that would be able to use it also? Tom, we, um, we approached All Saints a couple years ago when we first started, and they at that time did not express any interest in joining with us. And the only other school I would imagine was the interest would be Carver, but they have eight tennis courses right. in their own. So I guess my so I guess the question was, since All Saints is a neighborhood school, very close and I didn't I didn't I just wonder what their what their take on the whole thing was or if they've been yeah, reapproached or just great 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 kind of aware of it and I don't know why. Okay. Know why. Okay, so but if you're interested you guys would be open. I'm right? sure we could work something out. Okay. Yes. We we were close a number of times okay. and I yeah. thought it would fit for them mm -hmm. instead of taking their kids to Delta. I don't even know what they want to go with it. They want to go when do you want these to be used? Right, absolutely. Central has none right now. Right. No. But the majority of uses for the public. I see Commissioner Duranchak has a question. With uh, a lot of uh, aging tennis players and, <laughs> and pickleball. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> no pickleball? <laughs> You'll have to put the tape on it yourself. The USDA will not allow us to put Well, that's not too healthy for the book. The USDA will donate money towards the projects. However, if pickleball is included in your project, they will not donate money. Okay. <coughs> put some painters on there for you. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? If I'm not mistaken, uh, the City of Bay City is going to, or has spoken of contributing $25,000 towards this effort, correct? Correct. They're, and they're discussing that. I don't want to say that they're going to do that. Well, I think uh, the discussion... Mr. 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 Chair, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we participate in these gentlemen's project. 
up to a limit of uh, $25,000 or whatever the Bay City, City of Bay City contributes. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank Appreciate you your much. time. Thank you. We didn't expect that. We can have a light of fire under the city. Just one last comment. We yeah, do have a pickleball yes, at the community center. So, yes. So right. you can right. promote that. Okay. okay. We will have that challenge. Remember, Oh, thank you. <coughs> that was the first and only place I played tennis at. All right. Um, <laughs> under our next order of business, we have from uh, the Bay County Sheriff, this is the acceptance of the Bay Area Community Foundation funding. This is for body armor. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. From the Bay County Prosecutor, this is a renewal of the Bayonet Grant Agreement. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. From uh, Bay County Road Commission, this is uh, Road Commissioner's Health Insurance. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> um, under Buildings and Grounds, we have uh, Architectural Services for the Roofing System. So moved. Moved, and supported. moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Commissioner Krieger. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cavallis. Good to see you, Rick. Look, I know that we have a rubber roof on there right now. Yes. Was there any consideration done to the metal roofs that have become so popular in the area? <coughs> well, I think metal on a flat surface probably not work. Okay. I don't know if we would add to it to <coughs> Okay. Well, I guess that answers my question. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Rick, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. The Farmer's Market Canopy, this is a repair of $3,000. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. From the Division on Aging, this is the Senior Center Dining Agreements, seeking an increase uh, for Williams. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? See, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Region 7 Area Agency Waiver Contract. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. From Mosquito Control, we have a controlled uh, material bids. It's an annual. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Number two, we have light trap contracts. I think there's 10 or 11 of them. Some approved, support. Moved and supported. Commissioner Krieger, I see you got your hand. Hey, Tom. <clears throat> the question I have is for the individuals that are, are monitoring these traps, mm -hmm. are they on their property? Correct. So do they have any more of an advantage in getting rid of the mosquitoes than people who don't have these traps? No. No, we just use the, their location and their electricity for that. No, it's just one of the one of the many indicators we use for what type of mosquito and the, um, the number that's, that's out there. They don't get anything, anything different than anyone else. No. Okay. Okay. Because I was just wondering if, if it was a case where I'd have less mosquitoes because we're trapping them <laughs> with these light traps. I put my name down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, they don't. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Tilly, I see your hand. Is yeah, up. and Tom. But it, with the winter as, as as mild as it's been, are we looking at an er are we looking at an er as a much as snow like summer? <laughs> are, are, are we looking at a, uh, at this yeah. point in mean, an early spring, spring early this year, or as compared to what we've done the last couple of years, we've had these brutal winters. You know, two over history, let's say like 30, 30 years of history here. It really it really varies very little. It may be three or four days each. You know, each way, uh, it, it really doesn't, it really varies. Like example, we do our aerial spring treat 
uh, our target is always the 15th of April, and uh, sometimes we may do it the 8th, or sometimes we may, we may do it the 16th, but it did really, really, really close. Sure. Well, good. Thank, Thank you, sir. It's pretty good. It's pretty Thank close. you, sir. See, Commissioner Duradchuk had a question. With the, on the news and everything about the Zika virus, mm -hmm. is that mosquito a different species than what we have here? Well, uh, first of all, uh, every day, the World, Court, World Health Organization uh, and, and the Center for Disease Control comes up with something different or something they, they change. You know, there's two, uh, two mosquitoes, the Aedes albopictus, um, uh, and uh, uh, those are kind of more warm weather uh, mosquitoes. And uh, we have some of our major species is a cousin of that, the Aedes vexan, and that's one of the um, all the numbers that we're going to give a report are about one of our highest numbers in the, in the summer. And that mosquito is also a, a <coughs> daytime biter, just, just, just like the other ones. And, uh, and that mosquito will come, anytime you get an inch or two of rain, it will come through uh, standing water. Uh, you know, they're called the feather, you know, feather field mosquito. In the <coughs> yard or something like that, the roadside ditches. We have uh, tons and tons of the the 80s back stands and some of the 80s species, which would be a cousin to that. Uh, do we think it will ever get up here? Who knows? Probably not. But they keep saying, well, because it's cold up here. Well, it's cold up here now. May, June, July, August, and September is a is a, a different different story. Um, in the uh, Triceratops, <coughs> 80s, the Triceratops has been in the Chicago area for 10 years, and that's the second vector vector of this. But to repeat, they, you know, they're finding something new about it almost every every day uh, for that. But uh, uh, you know, we don't have those two species up here, but we do have their cousins. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, sir. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> all opposed? Motion carries. Number three, we have a scrap tire disposal. This is a annual program. Sold. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Commissioner Krieger. Thank you. Um, so going hand in hand with the, the, the tire disposal, Bangor Township usually has a, a spring cleanup and then the fall right. cleanup. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we'll still be able to coordinate the time they, to grab yeah, the tires. To us and, okay. and as you recall, uh, last few years we've had a uh, state grant to so really cost us Virtually not even scrap for the last two, uh, at least three years. Probably. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, no other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. From the personnel director, we have a letter of understanding with the Registered Nurses Association or organization. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Commissioner Krieger. Thank you. Um, Joel, maybe you can answer this for me if you would. So, I understand that there will be a, a change of pay rate for when one of the nurses is, is in a classroom setting, correct? That's correct. With the current collective bargaining agreement, there's a provision in there for um, work that's normally done by a higher grade. And this is a thing that's found in the job description for public health nursing services manager. So I didn't see anywhere t numbers as far as what they're getting now to what they're going to go to if they're in that? It's, it, it really varies because some nurses have an associate's degree and some have a bachelor's degree. And their pay grade is based upon, number one, the level, number of years that they've been employed and also whether or not they're an associate's or uh, what's called an ADM. So it's degree. kind of a floating scale then. Yeah. So, but the general average is um, if about uh, 32 weeks a year it's about two three hundred dollars per person maximum okay thank you how many folks could possibly a day get that draw could you just have one one nurse doing some instruction or could you have all the nurses over there doing typically some? we have up to about five um, during a semester and they're generally on Tuesdays that's when we see the nursing students come um, and like I said, that is that average that I mentioned was per year, not per day. So. Okay. And that, so if more than one could technically be doing some instructing on any given day. That's correct. All right. 
Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else have any discussion or questions in regards to this? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. We have uh, number two, the 8515 split for employees health care for 2016. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have the reclassification for the recreation coordinator. We moved and support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. From the Director of Recreation mm -hmm. and Facilities, we have uh, the golf course fee schedule. This is, I think we're fine tuning this. This should probably be about it, right? Yes. Okay. So moved. Or moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Number two would be a bubble sock, uh, soccer ball uh, purchase. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? <laughs> Commissioner Till. What the heck is a bubble soccer ball? <laughs> <laughs> you may have seen them on um, TV, but essentially what it is, one of the main brands is called Knocker Ball. There's four different locations in Michigan that have Knocker Balls. And what it is is a big sphere that you actually get into okay. as shoulder straps goes from over your head to just below your knees and you play like soccer with them. You can run into your teammates, you can fall, it's, you know, it's really cool looking. Clear small wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen, I, now that you say it, I've seen those. Is there an insurance issue with this at all? Not that I'm aware of. I kind of posed that question and you know, of course, everybody who plays would have to sign a waiver. Right, okay, that's all right. Mm -hmm. yes. Commissioner Lutz. How much does each one of these cost? About 250 bucks a piece. And the way, that they're, the way that they're sold is they are sold for one size that's for people under 5'7". So like our older kids, maybe our 12-year-old kids. Um, but then adult sizes are anybody they sell a sphere that's for people who are five seven and over so we'd have to buy both sizes because i know some 12 year old kids that are much taller than five seven uh, this is five thousand dollars we're going to be asking yes we're going to be asking for five thousand mm dollars -hmm. yes and that all go towards the purchase of these right bubble suits yep bubble suits yep <laughs> See, Commissioner Duranchek has a question. So everyone that participates in this is in one of these spears, or is there people kicking in on the outside? Or? <laughs> well, everyone who participates is in, is in, is is in an actor ball. Well in, I see. Mm -hmm. I can send you a video link. It's, uh, it's no. pretty neat. Oh, excuse me. Are you done, Commissioner? Yeah, yes, thank you, Mr. <laughs> um, is this going to be used like in a summer recreation program as well? Yeah. Yes, it can be used um, in the summer recreation program for our older children in the program. And then it can also be used in our gym, so we can have like a drop-in time in the winter or the fall when it's when we can't use them outside. And, and, and you're buying both sets for the. Yes. They're both coming in at the same time. Yeah. Oh. Yes. That is the plan. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna keep us informed as to how well it gets uh, accepted by the public and. Yes, absolutely. And the grant isn't due for about another month and a half. So um, as soon as we hear back, I did get a little initial feedback from the granting agency and they thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. So, Is it uh, kind of a, a fitness uh, type of an exercise? Yeah, because you'd be running around playing soccer okay. while you're wearing the knocker ball. All right. So. <laughs> no. Tom. Uh, we were going to have as uh, the if the grant is obtained and we have uh, them purchased, the first kickoff would be the Bay County Board of Commissioners versus the Saginaw County Commissioner. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, we're on. We're on for that. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, thank you, Kristen, for the information. Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. From the health director, we have amendment number one to the comprehensive planning, budgeting, and contracting agreement. <coughs> so moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Under payables, we have some uh, payables uh, within the agenda. Some moved. Support. Move, moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. From the finance officer, we have one, two, and three. This is the analysis of the general fund equity and the update of the executive directive 2007-11 and some budget adjustments. Will be received. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none. Oh, Dean. Is that to receive one and two? Yes. Oh, and I'm I'll, sorry. Yeah. And I'll make the motion for uh, budget adjustments, which would be number All right. Well, let's do one and two first. I guess I... Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Now the budget adjustments? So moved. Or moved and supported. Uh, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Deanne. Uh, number four, we have a request for proposal for waste removal. So moved. Or <laughs> moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner Krieger. Thank you. Um. <laughs> so we're talking trash again. <laughs> and and currently right now we're with okay Republic okay and so how many different bids do you think we'll get, we'll have out there? Last time we had three respondents. Okay. <coughs> so there is competition. And there a time frame to respond? I have not issued a bid yet, but we usually have about sixty days, thirty days. Okay. So, so by spring we'll be talking trash again. We'll always be talking trash. Again. All right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, good job, Francis, because I think you're going to see some savings. You, you know, they have to sharpen their pencil as well. So, do we do this every year? Every two years. So All right. This was a three-year contract. All right. Good. Thank so you very much. All right. Thank. You. Uh, with no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Francis. Uh, does anybody have anything under any referrals? Any unfinished business? We've got a couple of things under new business. This is uh, from the sheriff. This is Bayonet Grant Renewal. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Number two would be... Uh, a rapid financial solution. This is a prepaid uh, debit inmate release. Uh, I think we're so moved. Support moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Number th or B would be uh, amendment to the agreement with the uh, Department of Health and Human Services. So moved. moved. Support moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Joel, that position is now filled, right? Uh, are you familiar with this? Oh, the, yeah, the home position. Well, I think you're asking for a, a budget adjustment because it wasn't filled within time, and they're asking for some money back, correct? That's how I read it. You know, I, Joel's not asking. I'm not asking that. But it, but well, I yeah, but we're that do, position was filled. It, uh, it's filled now. Yeah. It wasn't filled. That's why they want some of that money back. Yes, I believe that's correct. No, we're actually saving that. We're saving it because they didn't they didn't fill it earlier. earlier. As soon as they expected. But it's filled now. It's right. Now, All right. That's why they want some of the money back because it wasn't filled. At the time, right? No. Oh. We're not, we don't have to pay that amount because they didn't they fill didn't it. Fill it yeah. Oh, okay. So we're saving that for this right. year. They just need to technically amend the contract All right. to reflect. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Commissioner Krieger. Yeah, I do have one question. As in the past, we've always said, as the grant funding goes, so does the jobs. So if, if after this time period expires and the state doesn't renew that funding, then what are we going to do with that position? Well, I would not agree to that. We've agreed to three years of funding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody, Anybody else? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Number uh, C, we have a uh, travel request for 911 dispatch. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Any questions or discussion? Commissioner Tilly. I just want to say, I took the uh, tour of a couple of my fellow other commissioners. 
through uh, Central Dispatch 911, and I just want to say how impressed I was with the, uh, um, the equipment and um, the staff that they have in that, in that office. It was like walking into the Star Trek Enterprise and uh, um, very, 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 very impressed. You, you name it, it's there in front of them, and they're on the phone, they're on the computer, they're on, they're on social networks, everything all right at their fingertips. And they respond like that. Uh, and to, to be able to do that with the patients that they do that, they need to be commended. Um, I, I just want to say, I couldn't, I couldn't say enough about how, how impressed I was with what they had going on over there. And our tax dollars are going to good use. So. Commissioner Durancha. And, and I, I'm almost positive that uh, Rochelle's, they have a, a national network of these 911 uh, positions and stuff that she's involved with. She's the vice president of the national, you know, so that's quite an honor just to, you know, for all the 911 things that are out there in the whole United States. So I think that's a kudu for her, too. Yes, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Begay. And also, the smart 911 thing is in effect now, so they can they can track closer, they can tell if there are pets in the family, you know, all kinds of other information. So. We still, they, they would encourage people to sign up for that smart 911 to get more information that way too. Yes, sir. I think it's a good discussion for the general public who might watch this, see that they are much safer with the technology that we have there that, as Commissioner Tilly said, that the tax dollars has funded. So, anybody else? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I don't believe we have, does anybody else have anything under new business? I, I have, un Mr. Chair, I have unfinished business. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, uh, Amber. Yeah, somewhat go out of order. Um, this has to do with uh, the proposal that was referred from Personnel and Human Services regarding the reorganization of the Public Defender's Office. Um, that matter was referred to the full board for further discussion. Uh, in the meantime, we have had an opportunity to have a meeting with the uh, attorneys over at the Public Defender's Office and also with the regional contact person with the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission. Um, so I have a brief memo to give you just for you to take a look at so you're aware before the next meeting comes about. I don't want to spring anything on you in terms of the different proposals when you have to Take it to the board as a whole. Thanks. Um, overall, <coughs> overall, the uh, representative from MIDC was very pleased with the proposal to bring the attorneys back in house. She did indicate that out of all of the counties that they have talked to to date, that Bay County is the closest to hopefully being in compliance when the new guidelines are passed. Um, I want to stress the fact that the new guidelines have not yet, in fact, been approved by the Supreme Court, although she believes that they will be approved by May. Um, and this is just one small step on behalf of the county in terms of getting into compliance with what those proposed guidelines are going to be. However, it does put us in a much better position uh, to get the ball rolling once those guidelines are in place and we will not be in such a time crunch in order to establish our own written policy that has to be approved by the state. Um, there are some questions in terms of how we are going to utilize staff and some questions as to how these two different offices are going to be organized, whether they're going to be two divisions within Corporation Council. There was some concern as to whether or not this would create a conflict, um, whether there should be two divisions within one, Department of Public Defender, again, if that would cause a conflict. Um, and so we are going to request uh, an opinion from the State Bar of Michigan Ethics uh, Board to tell us what particular services the administrative staff will be allowed to serve both offices um, for cost saving measures. All of those things aside, um, we're going to have to decide how to implement this over quite a long period of time. Uh, we would request that when you go to the board um, next week next week for the full board that the request for the additional attorneys still be considered at that point in time. I think it's a very good idea to get the ball rolling and all of these additional concerns that have been raised uh, by the judge and the uh, Indigent Defense Council can be addressed after we started to put these things in place. 
Thank you. I see Commissioner Tilly has his hand. Does, does this go, go back to when, uh, I, would, I guess I got to get caught up to speed here, um, that we're not, at one time we outsourced the defense help. So and evidently we're not going to outsource the defense help? Well, we, we outsourced the misdemeanor okay. criminal defense, and we began doing that, I believe, in 2008, yeah, something roughly. Like that, correct. Um, part of the, the difficulty with outsourcing, and it was in, initially done for cost saving right. purposes, um, is that there is limited control or oversight over the services that are being provided. And one of the uh, guideline rules that are being proposed to the Supreme Court is. Uh, certain is that the attorneys have to meet with their clients within a certain number of days after they've been charged that in fact every single person who comes into the courtroom is going to have to have assigned counsel present for them unless they affirmatively waive until a determination can be made if they qualify for that counsel and that's just not a service that is capable of being provided by the outside contract attorneys we also thought that it would um, the outside counsel attorneys are fine attorneys that's not the issue but when you have competing interests in terms of carrying a large docket for the least amount of money, um, those concerns enter into how much time is spent on each particular ind indigent defendant. Whereas if you have those attorneys in house, their goal is not going to be to get as many people through in as short a time as possible. Their goal is just simply to provide that defense in, in the best possible manner. So do we have an, a number of what this is going to cost us additionally or if it's going to save us money? We do, we do have a number. The previous proposal that was submitted had the breakdown of, of the different costs. It will at this point in time cost us approximately $70,000 more per year than the outside contract that we have. However, with the new Michigan Indigent Defense Council guidelines that are being implemented and the new statute, the state has, established, has set up grants that um, will pay for the additional amount that the county is spending over and above what it was spending in the last three years in order to come into compliance. So conceivably, this additional cost would in fact be covered by the state through a state grant. At least for one year. For as long as, for as, long as the statute is in effect until it's changed. They, so the next year, they're going to come back and go, we're not going to cover that extra cost, another unfunded mandate. And we're stuck with another seventy thousand dollar bill that uh, we <coughs> have. We stayed with the program we've kind of got going right now. I uh, I can't ever guarantee what the state is going to do in terms of whether or not it's going to fund the the grants that it says that it's going to fund. Um, so there is a chance at some point in time it will be an unfunded mandate. If that's the case, we would not be required to do that. It was my understanding that the main concern that we had at this point wasn't necessarily the additional cost, but rather the quality of services that were being provided to the indigent defendants, that it just wasn't up to constitutional standards. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions? So, um, Amber, we want to send this to the full board and uh, right and, and and you already had made that motion I just wanted to make sure that when you brought when this was brought up for consideration <coughs> next week that this was not a surprise that was was put on anybody yeah. that in, in terms of what we were going to do and what concerns were out there so we'll need a motion to do that because I don't think we made a motion yet did we some of moved and supported any other questions or discussion Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. I don't know if anybody else has any other new business. If not, I believe we do have a closed session. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I would request we go into closed session pursuant to MCL 15.268 subsection H to discuss the matters of Walraven versus Bay County Sheriff and Gillis versus Bay County Sheriff, federal court numbers 14 CV 12517 and 12518. Also, that we discuss the matter of a workers' compensation claim number 0356150220 pursuant to MCL 15.286 subsection E. Okay, thank you very much. I believe we're going to need a motion and then roll call. So, support. Moved and supported. Deanne? Tilly? Here. Yes. Francis? Yeah, too. Here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lutz. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> yes. Motion. I just thought you know I made the motion. Yeah. 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 Yeah
All right, we're back in the regular order of business. Shauna, did you want to recite what you uh, would like us to? Uh, sure. At, at, at this point in time, I would request a motion that the board uh, allow the attorneys in the wall raven matter and in the workers' compensation matter to proceed according to the recommendation and verify that, ratify that at the next board meeting. So, support. support. Moved in support. Questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Amber. Thank Move you. To adjourn. Four. Four. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion. Yes. <laughs>